Planning your first Royal Caribbean cruise is super fun and it leads to what will surely be an exciting vacation, but we have a list of things you don't know that you may be surprised that you need to know for your cruise up next. Hey everybody, it's Matt from Royal Caribbean Blog, and today we're covering a bunch of really helpful things you didn't even realize you needed to know. These are tips that most guests encounter on their cruise or things you'll have to figure out once on board. Better be prepared, right? All right, here we go. Let's start off with the things you're not allowed to bring on a Royal Caribbean ship. There's a lot of items that you can't bring on. Some are obvious, some not so much. Firearms, ammunition, including realistic replicas are not allowed. Sharp objects, including all knives and scissors, although Personal grooming items such as safety razors are allowed. Illegal drugs and substances are not allowed as well. So far, nothing really surprising, right? But you are not allowed to bring on candles, incense, coffee makers, clothing irons, travel steamers, and hot plates. Basically, if it plugs in, it generates electricity. It's a fire hazard. Not allowed to bring those on board. You're also not allowed to bring on hoverboards, uh, martial arts, self-defense, and sports gear, including handcuffs, pepper spray and nightsticks, no flammable liquids, no hookahs, no water hookah pipes, no ham radios, no baby monitors, no electrical extension cords, no dangerous chemicals, including bleach and paint. And you're not allowed to bring alcoholic beverages, although we're going to get to some exceptions later on there. You are allowed to bring, though, uh, baseball bats, hockey sticks, cricket bats, and golf clubs, skateboards, surfboards, and bicycles. However, those may not be used on board. If you do bring any of these items, Royal Caribbean is going to see them because they're going to go through an x-ray machine and they're going to flag them. They'll confiscate it and they'll give it back to you at the end of your cruise. Bottom line, do not pack these items. The next thing you need to know is to pack a day bag. When you arrive at the terminal, you'll hand any large luggage over to the porters and keep your carry-ons with you. Your bags will be safely delivered to your stateroom later that day, which frees you up from any heavy lifting while on board. What many first-time cruisers don't realize is how many activities are up and running by the time they board the ship. You may find it helpful to plan your first day of activities ahead of time so you can pack your, in your carry-on any must-haves. If you're ready to relax by the pool, for example, you'll want to have your swimsuit, change of clothes, sunscreen, sunglasses, etc. If you're looking to scale the rock wall, you definitely want to pack comfortable athletic gear. And if you want to go ice skating, keep long pants and socks in your bags. Heck, it's also a really good idea to keep medication with you in your carry-on bag just in case there's a delay getting your regular luggage. The next thing you should be aware of is there are dress codes on your cruise, but don't freak out, it's not as bad as it sounds. One of the most common questions we get for first time cruisers is how formal is formal, what are the dress codes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are three main dress codes, casual, smart casual, and formal. I'm gonna read what Royal Caribbean describes it as, let you decide, right? Casual is quote, kick back and feel the vacation vibes, casual attire, suitable for all breakfast and lunches, and some dinner options. Means jeans, polos, sundresses, blouses, and generally comfortable clothing. Shorts are fine for breakfast and lunch, but keep the swimwear, tank tops, and bare feet to the pool deck. For smart casual, they describe it as a step up from more typical dinner wear. This means you're breaking out collared shirts, slacks, nicer dresses, skirts, or pantsuits. If you're feeling snazzy, sports coats or necklaces are a great way to up your style. And for formal, Royal Caribbean describes it as dress of the nines. This means your evening best, suits and ties and cocktail dresses. Nothing is too fancy on this night since black tie is acceptable. You can also rent a tuxedo or break out your evening gown and best jewelry. Nope, formal nights are only on select ships and sailings. Now, I know some of that sounds really scary sometimes, even formal especially, but fear not if it's not your thing. Formal nights are optional, though recommended, and will only take place one to three times per cruise. On a seven-night cruise, you'll have two formal nights. On a three or four-night cruise, just one formal night. And as always, there are plenty of casual restaurant options available on those nights too, and the dress codes only apply to the main dining room and some of the specialty restaurants. So, so elsewhere on the ship, wear whatever is generally acceptable to be wearing out in public, <laughs> regardless of the dress codes. Something else you should know about is there's no self-service laundry available on the ship, but dry cleaning and laundry services are offered for each stateroom at an additional fee. Make sure you've got enough clothing for your vacation so you won't need to make major washes. Also, bringing an empty bag may seem counterintuitive, but you likely need one for packing souvenirs on your return trip. In addition, you can take advantage of things like wrinkle release spray that Downy makes, as well as maybe just hanging your clothes up in the shower and running the shower so it steams up. That can help get rid of wrinkles in your clothing. The next thing you need to know is you can bring some beverages on board the ship. You may have remembered earlier in this video, we mentioned you can't bring alcoholic beverages. However, on embarkation day, each stateroom may bring up to two 750 milliliter bottles of wine or champagne. These bottles of wine or champagne you bring on board may be opened up with no additional fee. Heck, we will even give you a bottle opener to do so. If you elect to bring one of these bottles to be opened in a restaurant or bar or lounge, there may be a corkage fee applied for you. 
In addition to that, you're also allowed to bring up to 12 bottles or cans or whatever of non-alcoholic beverages, water, soda, Gatorade, you know, whatever you need for that. Those are allowed to be bringing in these limits, the two 750 milliliter bottles of wine or champagne or the 12 bottles, cans, whatever of non-alcoholic beverages. That's per stateroom. So if you have two staterooms booked, you can obviously double that. If you have three staterooms booked, triple that, but it's per stateroom, not per person. And the last thing you really should know that you may not know you need to know is that drink packages and internet packages are cheaper if you buy it before the cruise. Before you go on your Royal Caribbean cruise in the months, weeks, and maybe even years leading up to your cruise, go on to the Cruise Planner website. This is on Royal Caribbean's website. You can pre-purchase drink packages, internet packages, and a variety of other things as well. But drink packages and internet will cost you way less if you pre-purchase it before the cruise. So if you know you wanna get one of these things, definitely buy it before you set sail. So there are a few of my favorite Royal Cream tips that you didn't even know you needed to know. By learning about them, you're gonna have a greater peace of mind and be prepared for your awesome upcoming cruise. Thanks for watching. This has been Matt from Royal Caribbean Blog, and we'll talk again real soon.